Alperin Shangun shines with 30 points, but the Rockets suffer their worst loss of the season. Let's talk about it. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Summit State of Mind, presented to you by the Apollo Podcast Network and powered by Celebrity Mint. In this episode, we're going to discuss another incredible Alperin Shangun performance, takeaways from the Rockets' worst loss of the season versus the Blazers. We're going to have a dialogue about Jalen Green, and we're going to go home on Rockets, Hornets, preview for tomorrow. Of course, I'm in studio, so of course I'm going to be joined by my co-host, the GM, as well as my other co-host, the big dog, DJ, my big boys. I want to ask you how we're feeling, but I feel gut feeling y'all kind of know. Should we pour one out? I feel like moment of silence? For this team and their playing hopes. <laughs> <laughs> DJ literally takes a sip of his drink. I don't, I don't know what else to do about this team. Let's just talk about it. We Let's, just talk. Talk. <laughs> Let's just talk. Let's talk. This about is it, the man. therapy session. This is the, this is the so they get their act together, man. This is a therapy session. So <laughs> let's get it going. Let's get it going. <laughs> Look, the the Rockets did suffer their worst loss of the season, and I'm going to continually call it that. When you lose to the worst ranked offense in the NBA, number thirty ranked offense in the NBA, when they score 137 points, because mm-hmm. they had beaten us last night, 137 to 131. Pause. We're going to get into that game in just a minute, like the totality of the game. But I do want to start off on good news. I do want to talk about one Alperin Shangun, obviously. Another incredible performance, 30 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 11 of 17 from the field, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. I mean, absolute all-star. I mean, over to you, DJ, first and foremost. Like, you advocate... For an all star, putting up all star numbers still. I mean, the numbers speak for itself. I mean, he's been balling out since like the beginning of the year, January 1st, 2024. Um, I think it was around like 25, maybe 12 and 7. I don't know. But I know the last three games, he's been averaging 30, I think 12 and 5. And, yeah, 30, 12 and 5. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the record has not like reflected it. Yeah, reflected it because usually when star players put up numbers like that you you usually would gift it with the win but it is what it is mm-hmm. um it's it's great to see Sengu, you know like I said keep balling um hey nobody expected him to ball like this I'm, I'm gonna keep saying it man he's an all-star that man is an all-star I, I every episode I'm saying he's an all-star and I'm gonna keep saying it until it happens it's gonna happen this year by the way it better happen it better this happen. year they just, they just yeah. announced the oh so by the way they just announced the, the starters, Western Conference yeah. all-stars yeah we were I mean, we were privy to it. We yeah, knew. Yeah. We saw where the votes were at. I there think, wasn't going to be no miracle of three million votes that were going to magically yeah. hop in his I, pocket, I think the right? three obvious ones are going to be LeBron, KD, and uh, Jokic. So. But if he's able to sneak in, I'm still running my victory lap. But he's, he's going to be an all-star. But it's also great to see him. It's also, it's also great to see him ball, um, especially with his back against the wall um, coming into this season. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody expected him to like just be a second fiddle or third fiddle to uh, Fred and Jalen or whoever. Um, yeah, he's 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 shocking everybody. He's getting the media's attention. You love to see it. So yeah, he was pretty glossed over too in terms of before the season. I mean, they were ready for Brook Lopez to take the starting spot. Yeah. So the fact that he's kind of superseded all expectations. And, like, I, we've said this in the past, the third-year leap that we all thought Jalen was going to get belongs to Alper and Shingun. Yeah. That third-year leap is real over to you now, GM. In terms of how he's been performing lately, especially lately, I mean, mm-hmm. I think his point totals, we have <clears throat> last game 30 against Boston 24, against Utah 37, which tied his career high. Yeah. I mean, the dude's pulling up all-star numbers, and you guys saw another performance last night, right, yeah. in terms yep. of that? Absolutely. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. You see the way he's performing against good teams, bad teams. The guy plays hard and shows out every night. He's putting up the numbers, and he's scoring when the team needs. You see the, tr- you see the trends. Uh, in the first half, he kind of lets the game come to him. He feels things out, comes out in the second half, makes his adjustments, and knows that he's the dude on this team and will be ready to score when his number is called. Uh, you know, last night, he let Jalen, Jalen went off in the first half, and then the second half, LP was like, okay, it's time for me to put on the cape. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to pull out the dub, 
but it's very good to see LP trending the way he is. Uh, all-star numbers, like DJ said. The guy's going to perform. The guy's going to play. It's just a matter of the team as a totality performing up to pub with him. I know. It, don't you feel like it's almost wasted these games? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, like, these are wasted it's, games, it's, essentially, it's, it's right? It's terrible. But, I mean, you can see uh, the way that Alp is, even on the court, off the court. I don't know if everyone – obviously, this today's Thursday, but January 25th. Uh, J.J. Redick released a clip of Alp talking oh, about yeah, the it. baby Jokic it. nickname. And he's – you know, he's cool with it, but he doesn't want to be that guy. He wants to be the first Alperin Shingun. That says it all in terms of his mentality and who he wants to be. He doesn't want to be compared to Jokic. Their games are similar, but he wants to be the one and only Alp. And, hey, man, when you got someone like that, that kind of dog in him, yeah. proverbially, yeah. Uh, I'm happy well that done. he's nice. on my team. Nice. He's all, like He also said in that clip, he was like, I go into these games thinking how am I going to guard that defender or that player? He's also like he says now like I'm going to this game thinking like how are they going to guard me? And, yep. and you want and it's that's what you love to hear out of your star player, uh-huh. right? Like, especially that confidence. So it, it's great that he's confident as well too. So. Yeah, it's not the matter of the star player adapting to the set; it's yeah. more of the set adapting mm-hmm. to the superstar itself. Agree. I love I love what, what you all said in regards. Can I say to one that? more thing? Yeah, then? go ahead. It's like I, I just want to say that I'm happy that Shingun is making the media rounds mm-hmm. in terms oh, of yeah. his publicity. Uh, it doesn't just build up his brand, but also builds up the Houston Rockets brand. Facts. Okay, the fact that he's becoming must see TV, and all of these high end interviewers, people with podcasts, like first Paul George, now JJ Redick, you're starting to see LP starting to make these rounds and build up who he is as a public persona, and it's going to do wonders for his image as one and two that these coaches and these players are talking him up the whole time, not just fans but players and coaches as well. I mean, we all, the shitty thing is that we're in a narrative-based world. Mm-hmm. But I will say this, the narrative for LP is trending upwards. And that narrative is looking really fucking good. So I'll say that for sure. Right, right. And I think like, we've talked about this in the past where, and, and I'm gonna quote you DJ and when you said this, because we've talked about that baby Jokic nickname. He's not Jokic, he's just Alperin Shangun. That's, that's that's how that's how he is, and that's mm-hmm. that's who he is too. And if you want to talk, baby Jokic, Alperin Shingun's actually outperforming Jokic in year three. Facts. Jokic in year three averaged twenty points. Alperin Shingun in year three is averaging twenty two, twenty two nine, and I think almost six. And I think Jokic was averaging twenty ten and five or six or something like that. So in terms of numbers. Operant Shingun, at least from a point stand point to point standpoint, is ha huh, point to point standpoint. <laughs> You're gonna get many of those guys. Anyway, we can get laughs today because we're just we're we're, we're re- you know guys you we're know the terms yeah. reaching we're down bad so we're all reaching at this point. Yep. Um, yeah, he's outperforming, uh, you know, Jokic in that sense. So I don't think he's ever gonna truly get enough credit until the Rockets start winning games. I mean, to compare from years ago, Russell Westbrook. They were, what, the sixth seed, but he averaged a Mm triple-double. If he broke that record, I believe if he broke that record, but they were the worst team in the league or second-to-worst team in the league, he wouldn't have won MVP that year. Yeah. I don't think it would have been, like, that serious. Like, it's it's still a record-breaker, but I still think people would have voted for James Harden more that year. Mm -hmm. So, same sense here. Alper and Shangun's numbers are kind of getting wasted because we're kind of starting to bottom out now. Yeah. We're, like, 11 in the West as we continue to drop. So, shout-outs once again to Alperin Shangun, and once again, you know, shout-outs to all of our listeners that continue to support him. Hopefully, he gets in this year where, you know, maybe there's an injury that's going to happen or the coaches and players vote him in. There's still a chance. I, I still think that's the second option. I still he, think he gets in. He's, like, getting more and more respect around the league because especially against these games, against, like, these high-end teams like the Sixers and Suns, you see, like – I mean, Embiid will yeah, pull him aside, and, yeah. dude. Embiid pulled him There's aside. There's a lot of respect. Him. KD talked to him. Like, it's a lot of respect for this man around the league. So, I yeah. think he gets in. Now, if he gets in, you know, barring, like, just because somebody gets injured, I'm still fine with it. But I think he gets in, like, outright. I wonder if one of these stars at some point is going to want to play with him. Because mm. we're at that time. He's 21. Yeah. So, there has to be a star maybe in their mid-20s. <laughs> I can think of a couple right now. <laughs> Jalen Brown, wink, wink. Um, he's one of them. But uh, I would think. 
Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there's an ongoing joke that yeah, I'm not gonna. You know, we're not gonna. We're not gonna we're say not gonna this on air. It. We're gonna move. Yeah, we're not gonna acknowledge it. We're not gonna Roman Reigns this situation. All right, <laughs> boys, let's go ahead and move on. Obviously, we talk about the positives. Let's talk about the negatives. The Houston Rockets did uh, take their worst loss of the season against the Portland Trailblazers, 131 to 137, uh, on the heels of a banked overtime bucket three-point shot by Jeremy Grant that ultimately catapulted them in overtime. We were just we were lost in so many ways. Uh, DJ, I want to take it over to you first. Um, takeaways from this game, like I, I will forever call this the worst loss of the season. Yeah, I, I really agree. Think it is. I agree. Right. Um, it was one of the losses we had like a few games ago. I, I thought that was it, but nah, this one counts. This one is the worst one. Especially to a team that has like you said before we got, got um got on the worst the worst offense in the league as of right now. And we gave up 130 plus points to that team. Nah. Um another point, we suck at defending the three. We left like especially the corner three. We left that corner three open so many times. You tweeted about and, it last night. You were like, Can we please cover we, that corner yes, three? Every time. Like even the first half when we were like, What up, are we doing? I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? So yeah. we suck at covering the three. I think uh I, I saw a stat and it said like I think the first couple of games they were like our opponent three point percentage was like one of the best, you know, and then now it's like gone down. It's one of the worst. So, and then also we can't fucking rebound. We we can. I don't. Rebound. Un- yeah. yeah, we get like who is their backup center? Uh, Ro- Ralph. Ralph. Some my, dude. My, my man was killing yeah. us on the boards bunch, and dunking on. It's a bunch of it was a bunch of AT and T Xfinity cable cable guys, man. And I'm like, <laughs> can we like lock in? Uh, granted, yes, we didn't have Jabari or Atari. Yeah. But we shouldn't have to depend on th- those two to be one of the worst offensive teams in the league. We let DeAndre yeah. Ayton, you know, he was struggling the past three games. We let him get 17 rebounds, 18 points, or wherever the stat that was. Like, no, Yeah, we, no, you're right. 17 rebounds, 18 points, yeah. yeah. That was, it's it's, that it's really bad. Yeah, and then Simons. We know Simons going to get his buckets. Jer- Jeremy Grant's going to get his buckets. It, it's just yeah. If, if we're going to lose that team, make it, make it to, like, it's not – I don't know how to explain it. Like, make it not look like that. You know? Right, right. Yeah, don't well, in a game like we that. shouldn't have lost. Yeah, you know, game, I mean, yeah. Shouldn't have lost. Shouldn't have lost, I, bottom line. I, um, we know this team is, like, low-key tanking a little. Um, But that, that was terrible. That was terrible. I'm not mad at the three that Jeremy Grant took. It was a lucky shot. Cool. It's just we shouldn't have been in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we should have pulled. We should have pulled away in the third, maybe the fourth. Sat our guys down, let the reserves or whoever get their run. But it's it's it is what it is. It happened, and we just got to do better. But uh, yeah, I agree. That's the worst loss of the season. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, That's bright right. side, Shingun and Jalen had a had a good master class game. I mean, thirty, yeah, thirty loss. by Shingun, twenty nine yeah. by Jalen. Yeah, Come was, on, that now was great. that was great. It was it was so great to see them. Yeah. What a waste, to too, no, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I don't know, oh. yeah, but that's a lot. Of Dude, no, seriously, it's it. I'm gonna. I, I I do have something I want to say, but I wanted y'all to talk first. So, GM, over to you right now. Worst loss of the season. Immediate takeaways. Uh, you know, like. I'm I'm concerned a little bit with Ime's rotations. Ooh. Oh, that's oh. definitely something that you know, like we gonna say I'm it. A big yeah. Ime guy. We're gonna talk it out loud. Big Ime you're, guy. you're the biggest Ime guy. You wanted yeah, it. Yeah, but the thing is with this is that you know his rotations, especially in the fourth quarter, you had to be a little questionable. Bringing in Jalen and Shingun a little late, you know, seven minutes left into the fourth. Yeah. Pulling Jalen and bringing in what. Um, was it Fred or Aaron Holiday? I don't remember they, who. They left Aaron Holiday in the, the game, man, man. What are we doing? My man left Aaron Holiday in over DB Dylan Brooks. Oh my God. That's criminal. Okay, okay, okay. I, yeah, and I do. There is a counterpoint to that. I, I do understand it to a degree. Yes. To a degree, I do get it. I will say this though. Let me say this. Um, you got to go to LP more. Jalen and LP were looking super dynamic, okay. and then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny that yeah. Fred was a great signing. He's played well, but sometimes I'm like, Yo, Fred, let's chill. Yeah, let the flow of the game happen. Don't interject yourself into the moment. Uh, tonight might not be your night. You don't always have to put the cape on. Jalen and LP had it. They were there. They were making things happen. Uh, I'm not gonna say that. Fred is the reason to blame, you know? I'm just saying that there's just little things here and there, little little uh, nicks here, little chips there, and 
things can change completely in terms of outcome, but it's just kind of bad trends. And um, I'm not a fan of Aaron Holiday closing and playing a lot of the fourth and OT over Dylan Brooks. Um, that's just me. Uh, this team needed defense. We can't defend anybody. Then your worst perimeter defender is on the bench. Yeah, your whole well, <laughs> let's talk about the fact that your entire backcourt is six two and under to close the game. Can't do that. And, and you're getting out rebounded. And, and, and you're getting out rebounded. And the fact we didn't even discuss this. And the fact that in the final possession, DJ, you did say you you can't blame. It was a very lucky shot. However, you could argue Fred Van Vliet should not have been in the game. Why is a six foot five ten without shoes player? Playing defense in the Williams. last seconds. I said this on Twitter. I stressed this before I, when I saw the rotation. I'm literally watching on TV and I'm like, why is FVV in the game? Why isn't, where are the lengthy wing players mm -hmm. and just play five out with the lengthy wings? What are we doing? Yeah. Is, is it like, just why didn't we go five out with the lengthy wings? No. Like, why isn't a man and, oh, a man was in the game, but then Dylan. You keep Dylan out. At the very least, you put him in for that final possession. Was he in? No. It was. It was. Yeah. It was Dylan DB. wasn't in. It was a man, Fred, Aaron, I think Jeff Green, and was Jalen in the final possession? No, Jalen no, was on wasn't. the bench. It wasn't LP either. LP was on the bench. Yeah. I don't, I oh, Jayshon. It was gotta be Jayshon. No, Jayshon wasn't playing last night. Oh, who was? Oh, you're right. Jayshon wasn't playing. I'm gonna say this. Is is it just me? Or has Ime's no Boban, Bobby. Bobby. Oh, Yo, Bobby. Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Has, Bobby was has there. Has Ime's defensive, like last second, last possession rotations, like never worked? <laughs> Is it just me? No. Well, okay. I no, mean, we got no. It's worked lucky to a degree. Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked to a degree, and yes, we did get really lucky against Detroit. However, yeah. I just didn't. When I was watching the game, I saw it happen in real time, and and my thought process, there was that. Why do you? keep the six footer in yeah when all you need is size length and to cover the stretch of the floor and you're only guarding three give up the two leave the paint open yeah yeah leave the paint open if let them cut Some, somebody, let them cut in somebody said we should um it would have been smart to foul too because i mean it wasn't that much yeah time. it's he uh, may's just not that type of yeah. guy he may's not gonna foul i mean he's got a lot of he ego. trusts his a yeah. lot of ego when you when you foul you don't trust your defense that's yeah. the bottom line yeah he may trust the defense however if you if you give up 40 41 41 40. points in the third i mean it's pretty much inexcusable wait, wait 40 41 in the third quarter it's inexcusable. I didn't even know it was forty. I thought they was just right. It was terrible. Right, and then and then bottom line in in terms of this game, this like why I call it the worst loss of the season. Considering considering what the schedule is ahead of us, considering how we are nip and tuck with the entire Western Conference on positioning, we were before last night's game. We were a half game behind the tenth spot. Mm -hmm. the, I think the ninth and tenth spot were tied, and we were a half game back. Every game matters now. Yep. So where, where where do we stay? You know what I mean? So where do we stand here? Boys, I want to question over to you, DJ. What needs to change? Well, first of all, I think, like, and I stress this a lot, Stone needs to get on the phone and make some moves. Like, you can't look at this roster and think, oh, we're going to get – they're gonna get a playing spot. I'm satisfied. No, man. Like it's not gonna cut it's it. It's not gonna cut it. Um, Fred playing 40 minutes a night. It's obviously taking a toll on his body and performance. Um, he's he missed the back to back, like for the first time, I guess, a couple games ago. You obviously like it. It's kind of taking a toll on Shingun. Like we need to make some moves. And then second, he may got to come up with some more offensive plays. The Fred and, and Shingun pick and roll. Yes, it's the, it's the most efficient NBA, but at the same time, it's getting a little bit too predictable. Um. We need to find. I think Ema needs to find a way to like get the ball like around more to like other play. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we need, but we need more offensive sets. This this Fred and Shingun pick and roll has to like not be the only thing we run. And, open and the playbook, yeah, right? Open the playbook. I understand Ema is not a defensive, no, offensive minded head coach. He's a defensive right. minded head coach, but you have. You have assistant coaches for a reason. Ben Sullivan, uh, Royal Ivy, Tiago Splitter. Hey, ask one of the guys. Uh, get some ideas for somebody. Like, it's just it's just too predictable. Our offense is too predictable, and, and it right. And defenses can like other opposing team defense can adjust to it like that. All you gotta do is just run a zone, 
bring the weak side help over. As soon as Shingun gets the ball, hey, you you swipe at the ball. You never know. Shingun might fumble it. Shingun doesn't like. I don't know. We need we need more offense. I think those are two main reasons. So, heck. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a fly. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh, I was god. waiting for you to notice. There wasn't even a fly. It was like a little feather. I don't oh, know a little feather. Was. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Um. No, nah, but um, shouts to Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> Last scene in the movie where that feather pops up. <laughs> No, we, love, we all love we all love a CGI feather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, I think the two main keys are roster moves and more offensive more offensive sets. Because yeah, it's too. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Facts. Definitely. Over to you now, GM. What, what needs to change here? No, I definitely agree with uh, DJ in terms of expanding the playbook. Uh, I even stated earlier about how dynamic Jalen and LP look together in terms of pick and roll. The moves that they've started to make now. It's starting to feel like you know Jalen might be coming around, even though it's barring it that it's inconsistent. We're starting to see a little bit more um, two-man play amongst our two most dynamic players, and it, we need something in terms of offensive sets that don't heavily rely on Fred and LP. No, I get it; he's our starting point guard. He's our those are our two best playmakers, but we're starting to reach a point in the year where teams have enough film on us and they're starting to understand the gist of our offense. And I think that Ime definitely needs to kind of like buckle down and open up a little bit more of the pages in the playbook and kind of just figure out extra wrinkles in a way that can help success. I mean, this isn't Rudy T running with Akeem where they just do the same sets with different wrinkles because Akeem is a, you know an MVP. LP isn't there yet. You know, we don't know whether he will be, but the thing about that is our reliance on him can definitely take a toll. Fred's minutes, that's going to hurt us way later in the year. LP's reliance, like his minutes, he might need, he needs some help too. And, you know, like saying making moves, we need it, man. We need to make a trade. Something's got to change in terms of this roster. Aaron Holiday should not be closing games. I mean, I don't want to. Attack no, him. no, you're Aaron not attacking Holiday, any. You're not. He's, ta- a, he's you're a, just, a decent NBA player, right? But my man should not be closing games. Like just agree. Right. frankly, right, outright. Um, another wing, extra size. You know, we need something in terms of just light a spark on this team. We need a move that can definitely help us in the long term. Uh, I don't think that any long term success can come out of the current team and the current roster build it's just not going to work. Uh, Stone's got to do something, man. we got to make something happen. Defense has got to improve, guys. I mean, we need Tari and Jabari back, like, frankly. Those two those two players coming back is essentially like making a trade. Yeah. That's what it would feel like for the type of injection this team needs. But when you do – when if you add one more player of a similar caliber uh, in terms of the way that they affect the defensive end and – even making open threes like that would just be so much help for this team moving forward and i don't know man like there's so many more things that we can expand on but those are probably the two main things that can really help and i mean coming from me i tweeted it out yesterday i'm not sure if a roster move can really help put this team over the top frankly well what do you define as over what's over the top over the top meaning get us into the play-in Oh, oh mm, I don't know. I, I, I must disagree. That's fair. Respectfully. No, that's fair. That's I fair. think there is that's a roster fair. move. I think there is a roster move that can be made to take us over the top. <clears throat> uh-huh. I, I think there's there, there's definitely options there. Okay. I Solid points, both of y'all, in terms of what, what needs to be improved amongst the team. Um, I want to expand a little bit upon what the GM said because that's my big, that was one of my biggest things. Alperin Shangun is 6'11", 7 feet tall. Is uh, okay. It's quick. Yes or no? Uh, since y'all are here, I'll just survey y'all. Is he af- is he the most athletic guy on the court? No. No. Okay. He doesn't have Kevin. When you're not the most athletic guy on the court, you have to have, and you're gonna get boards. You have to have like a Jokic, yeah. slash Kevin Love mindset. If you don't have the ups, as in yeah. you have to be a hawk for the ball. Yeah. Alperin Shangun does it is not like a super hawk for the ball in terms of rebounding. Yeah. And he doesn't have, like, insane length either. My whole hang-up here is a roster move needs to be made, which means Stone needs to make a trade. In my opinion, Stone needs to trade for an athletic wing that can help expand. And I think the best players that can play next to Opera and Shingun are athletic wings that can rebound. A la a player similar to a Pascal Siakam. 
players that can help him rebound the ball. You're not going to get it done if Jeff Green is closing the game yeah. as your four. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. you're not going to get boards. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're just not going to get boards. You you got outboarded the entire Let's look at the microcosm of last night's game. That's what's been the a, a like basically in a vacuum what's been the struggle mm -hmm. for the past several games that this team cannot get rebounds when it matters. Alperin Shangun isn't going to be able to clean. He's just not the type of player. He's not going to clean up the boards. Yeah. He's not going to get you 18 rebounds, 17 rebounds. He's just not that guy. And when you're not that guy, you need to surround him with athletic wings that can get rebounds. Stone has to get on the phone and find an athletic wing that can help get rebounds, play defense, and help him out on the boards. He needs help on the boards. So that's point number one. And point number two, I think this team obviously needs to find an identity they lost their identity on defense who are they yeah. we have to figure out who they are they that for the first 20 games they were the number one ranked defense we knew we were at defensive dogs that was our identity we get a hint of scouting and difference differences injuries and too. injuries yeah. too. teams are scouting us out okay we can attack them they play defense this way so we can attack them they run an Alperin Shingun and a Fred Van Vliet pick and roll so we so we can you know play our defense this way and Ime Udoka let's call a spade a spade he's getting out coached facts True. Fact. So no reason you should have the, been all coached by Chauncey right, Phillips last night. Right. So the ball. <laughs> Come on, Emay. That's real. He's right. So the ball, no pun intended. The ball is proverbially in the court of Emay Udoka now. Mm -hmm. How are you going to adjust? Because the NBA, as well as any major sports, NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, is a game of chess. Teams are going to continually counter your moves, and you're going to have to counter back. Yeah. So until a trade happens, he has to figure out a way to counter. And until that happens, we're not – this team's just going to continue yeah. to free fall. True. I mean, we're one gonna, in five in the last six, it's yeah, unacceptable. We're going to continue to get frustrated until he learns how to counter or unless some move is made. And you can't be yeah. – that stubborn to close there all day. Yeah, just, okay. I'm sorry. Like I understand we were short-handed, but come on, you yeah. got to put the long, like the, the tall, long, like pause dudes are up yeah. there, like right. Up there. Right, you know, and, so. but we do have good news on the horizon. Jabari Smith's off the injury report. He's available. He will play tomorrow in Charlotte. Let's, Let's go. fucking go. Let's go. My son returns. Darn, no more Jock Landale. Ten man. game wins. Ten oh, game wins streak well coming. Hey, yeah. well. hey, but it was against the worst freaking team. Well, once worst for one of the worst teams. teams. Yeah. Like one of the worst teams are West. But he did play well. You did good. Jock. So we gonna let? Hey, are we gonna thumbs up? Are we letting Jock cook? No. <laughs> he's like, come on, Kenny, get it together. Hell no. Move right. on, man. I know, fast. I mean, he's not he's not that lying. shit it burnt, man. Like <laughs> no actually all offense, Jock. Anyways, anyways. All offense. All offense. Uh boys, let's go ahead and move on now. Let's talk about obviously look, we've seen oh, we're like a smidge over the half of the season now, over the halfway point of year three of Jalen Green. I do want to have a discussion of sorts in regards to him. What is your overall opinion on his season so far? DJ, I'm going to let you talk first. What's been your overall opinion in regards to Jalen Green's like play? There's been a lot of people calling for his head. Are you ready to throw in the towel? Mm, no, not okay. yet. Okay. But he's, his overall, overall season has been shaky. Um, I will say he started off the season well. Um. And it's been like a roller coaster. He starts well, then boom, he just has a little drought. Okay, he has one, two, maybe three games where he's good. Oh, nope. And right now, before last night, it was just like this. It just kept going down and down and down. It, it will go up with a little great, inefficient performance with one, like once in a while, but then guess what? It keeps going back down. But I'm not ready to give up on him yet. Um, this like, uh, new system, new head coach, um, new teammates. It's going to take a minute. Now, if you were to ask me this question and we were like maybe year four or five into Jalen Green's tenure here, mm. I was like, yeah. It, yeah, it's, we need, it's time. Yeah, it's it, it, maybe it's time. But this is what, year four? Year, year three. No, year we're three. still in year three. I'm sorry. Year we're three. not even on the last year of yeah. his contract Jeez. yet. Yeah, year three. Um, I think he knows that. Hey, they're questioning about they're questioning me about things. They're questioning me like my skills. They're questioning my um, you know, stats. Hey, I need a knuck. I need a, you know, knuckle up. 
get get this in motion. I think last night was a great like you know stepping stone for him to get back on track. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not asking him to drop 40, 30 um, every night. I right. mean, it, it would be cool. We yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. it'd be cool. Let Jalen cook if he wants yeah, to do it. <laughs> let him cook if he wants to. But all I'm asking is to have like consistent, efficient games for him. Um, Agreed. Like last night, he had a good efficient game. I don't know what the shot on the um, his shooting was looking like, but it was it was really good. It was really good efficient wise. Um, like star players in the league, they're gonna have like you look at the stars like and I don't say, like the stars of the league, like the Lebrons, the KDs, the Jokic's, the Giannis, the Stephs, Lucas, all of them. Right? They perform every night. You have that one game where they're like dud. Yeah, dud. Like. Mm-mm. Nah, like you, you don't hear like people saying, "Oh, uh, Lucas a bust or Steph is this and that." Oh, SCA, nah, 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 man, it's okay. Right. It's an off night. Guess what? They come back that next game. Oh, um, Giannis um bounces back from a rough game against the so and so. Like, nah, nah. I I need those type of performances. Yeah. Hopefully from Jalen Green. Like, if he gives us that. Then there's no question. Him and Shingun, those are the two foundations of this of this team. Um, yeah. But overall, it's been shaky. It's been shaky. Um, I, I will believe. I do believe he will um, do better, and I and I believe that you know he's gonna make us proud. But right now, I'm giving it a shaky because my mm. boy he's in, he's been in, he's been a little bit inconsistent. So right. that's that's my whole thing about Jalen. No, good points, good points. Over to you now, GM, in terms of how Jalen's been playing. I think it's a fair assessment that people are disappointed in the, his his play. Yeah. I mean, I'm disappointed, you know, <laughs> as a big fan of Jalen. I mean, people are ready to pack it in, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little surprised at um, – What are we just, doing? I'm not going to say the naysayers in whole, but mostly kind of like the mentality of people – you know, grabbing like the pitchforks. It's a pitchfork <laughs> mentality yep. in terms of Rockets fans currently because the thing about Rockets fans, they tend to blame whomever is not living up to snuff in regards to performance, correct? Well, they got to they gotta pin it on somebody, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're an emotionally reactive fan base. I mean, if you're not emotionally reactive, you're not a fan. Um, I, th- I think I think it's really hard to be even I feel that's so hard, DJ. Fact. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, and I'm happy for the passion but I just think that words uh, can be conveyed better. Um, there's a saying, you know, or there's a word, being tactful in terms of how you speak. Because you never know how words will affect others, uh, you know. And for someone like Jalen, who has been struggling, we don't know what's going on in his life personally, but we can see that the words are definitely affecting him. In terms of support, I'm not saying that fans need to be like, oh, Jalen's going to be the dude. It's mostly just got to be like, hey, man, we don't know what's going on, but the man is struggling. He needs our support. I I think that as fans, sometimes we tend to step away and forget that these athletes are human beings as well. Facts. And, -hmm. you know, we've seen other players like Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving talk about uh, mental health. And I think that based on the behaviors of Jalen that we see on the court, uh, his social media posts, there's something going on that we are unaware of. And the thing about that is people tend to look at that and start to ridicule what's going on. The thing about it is that as fans, as armchair basketball players, uh, you know, that play 2K and talk (laughs) shit, um, I mean, there's... Luckily, all three of us can actually hoop. (laughs) There you go. <laughs> but I mean, they don't really under, they don't understand how e- how hard it is to make buckets in the league and to play consistently <laughs> night in, night out. Well, uh, when something's going on, like just imagine yourself at work at your day job, sitting at a desk, and something's going on in your life that's completely terrible, and you're not performing. Right. That happens with athletes as well. All I'm asking for is compassion, grace, <clears throat> empathy from Rockets fans because we do not know. And there's a reason why he's struggling, you know? And so we should be understanding, not throwing pitch for it, saying, I'm done with him, let's trade him. If you're going to do that, stick to it. Because once, if he does come back, stay on that side. Fox. I'm going to oh, tell you that stay, right now. Stay on your side. Stay on that side of the tracks. Stay on your side of the tracks. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I hate to be that guy. Yeah, because I, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm not the guy that's like, 
bandwagon fans, stay on your side. Nah, well, I'm welcome all the nah, bandwagers. Nah, nah. I need I need everybody. I'm on. not like that. Now, stay on that <laughs> side. When we up, when we up and it's looking great, stay on that side. <laughs> Same thing with the Houston Texans. Same thing. Look, stay hey, on that side, man. Say it. I see all. Chest look. out. Just chest out, baby. No, I'm exactly. the guy that's like, yo, when people are when we're, when we're performing well, you come to the parties. Come to parties. I'm hanging out with the boys. I'm <laughs> so I'm saying. Yeah, no, right, but, right. But you know, overall, it, that that's that's just how I feel. He's struggling, and there's there's we see it, and yeah. it's not okay, and it sucks because we're losing. But there could be other things that are going on. Just be graceful, guys. That's all I ask. Right, uh, we don't know, but no, we if, don't. But if but if he still struggles going into year four, like DJ said, yeah, let's have then, that talk. You know well, what? Yeah, then you got to start. You got to yeah, cut the cord. At, you got to think right, about it. Correct? correct. But this is his first year with Ime, new role, new team, new coach. Um, he's still figuring it out, and that's okay. You know, he was not. He's not the ball dominator anymore. Yeah. Al P is. Fred Van Vliet is. His usage is much lower than it was before in any moment of his life. Yeah, his touch has gone down too. Yeah. So. Right. I mean, it's okay, but you know, that's all I got to say in terms of Jalen Green. I hope that he will recover. I believe that he will recover, but that still remains to be seen. Right. Okay, and I'll give him, I'll give my point really quickly too, and I'll give everyone that is listening and watching a number. The number is two. He's the number two overall pick. That's why there's the pitchforks are out. If he was picked at number eighteen, no one would bat an eye. Yeah. Everyone say nope. he's overachieving. Yeah. The fact that he's picked at number two, all eyes are on you. Yeah. You're the you're the pick behind the, literally the number one pick. He was the highest draft pick since Yao Ming in 2002. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people have these expectations of being what comes with a top two pick, which means they're expecting him to be Kobe. They're expecting him to be Jordan. They're expecting, you know, there's these unrealistic expectations of the – Thousand for the one thousand plus players in existence that have ever entered or went through the NBA, or th- the couple of thousand that have been a part of the NBA family for the past seventy five years. There, out of all of those players, <clears throat> there's only Jordan, there's only Kobe, there's only LeBron, and Jalen is being compared to, to perform like Kobe, to perform like Michael, to perform like LeBron. That is. Super unrealistic in that sense. I don't need him to be Kobe and Michael Jordan. I just need him to be a viable shooting guard for the Houston Rockets. That's it. I don't need him to be anything special. And this is where it starts getting really important now. Because he's in year three, which means he's one year away from that last year of his contract. Which means he's one year away from either getting paid a stupid amount of money for an extension or... He's going to have to sign that that one-year deal yeah. and enter restricted free agency, and then we'll see how much he can make in the open market. A lot is riding now on Jalen. Yeah. Overall, like I'm not. All three of us are in agreement. We're not going to throw. We're not going to throw uh, him in trades. Like I'm not ready to give up on him. I want him on this team. I think I believe in him. I still feel like he can be very successful. I feel like Emei needs to empower him a little bit more. There's a lot there. Um, but overall, he needs – he just needs to flat-out play better. I mean, that's just that's just yeah. it. And he needs to – just just some semblance of consistency. Just, that's it. Just some semblance of consistency. We're just not getting enough out of that. And I think that's where a lot of people are kind of like, okay, we've seen enough, da-da-da. And it's hard, man, because you're comparing him to this – the person that happened to be in his exact same draft picked 14 picks after him. Yep. Alperin Shangun, who's playing far beyond all of our imaginations – and Jalen Green, who's playing far beneath everyone's imagination. And they happen to be in the same draft. So that's where I think a lot of the fan base has kind of lied right now. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, we can only hope that by end of season we're having a completely different dialogue. And we're like, man, thank God we had that talk after game 43. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, it's great, man. We're gonna, he's going to fucking kill it. Yeah, this is why we had that dialogue. Jalen, listen to the show. What's up, Jalen? Thank you. So uh, shout-outs to future DJ, future Justin, and future Kenny for that. So let's go ahead and move on to the final topic, boys. Rockets versus Charlotte in Charlotte. Rockets need this dub. They need it expeditiously. Yeah. DJ, over to you. Three keys, final score. Unfortunately, we are on the road. Um. 
Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde over here. Yeah, my bad. It's really bad. Yeah. No, no, not you. I'm just saying Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde in terms of the home away record. <laughs> the Rockets. Oof. It's <laughs> three keys, um, baby. <laughs> I don't want to just say like. Unless it's like a really, they're really like a really bad team. I don't want to just say, oh, this is the so and so they're working. Nah, man, yeah. you you can't underestimate any team in, in the league. Like I've done that in the past because you know, there's the it's the Pistons or the Spurs or heck even like it don't matter. But mm. this team, this Hornets team is they're sneaky good. Um, I think key number one would be just the rebound. Get, get crash crash the boards, man. I need everybody crashing the boards. I need everybody in the paint helping Shangun out. Shangun is only one person. Luckily, we do get Jabari back. Jabari will, will That's be. That's huge. Yeah, will, that that Jabari, hit back is huge. Jabari is going to help us on the boards expeditiously. Um, I think one game he um, he, I think he had multiple games in a row with ten or more rebounds. Yeah, man, he, that helps out a lot. Number two, guard the three. <laughs> I don't know what the Hornets are shooting from three this um this season. But guard the three. I do not I, want. I don't, don't want to look, man. Yeah. In all honesty, I'm scared. I don't want the <laughs> Hornets to look like the prime Golden State Warriors when they're shooting three. No, <laughs> no. Guard the three. Guard the three. And then the last key. The last key, honestly, is I think Jalen needs to cook. Um, I don't Hell, see any guard. Talk. I mean, we already know Shingun. Yeah, we already know Shingun is gonna cook anybody who, who's in front of him. I think I don't know who's starting for the. Uh, uh, Hornets. I think it's Mark. Mark something. Is that Mark Williams? Mark Williams. Yes, Mark yeah. Williams. It's Mark Williams. He cooked them who's last ser- time. Who's serviceable. Yeah. yeah, he's a serviceable. He's a serviceable player. big. But Shingun cooked his ass last time. He cooked serviceable cook, bigs. Cooked them. Cooked them. <laughs> All right. I need Jalen to cook. I need Jalen to cook as well. I don't know who's starting at the two or who, who's at the one. Um, actually, obviously, I'm the one. So no, Rosier Rosier Rozier got traded, right? Yeah, Terry got traded. Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Nah, nah, Kyle, nah. I don't even think Kyle's going to play for LaMelo Ball at the two. I don't even think Kyle's going to play for them. But I agree. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. But Jalen Jalen needs to, like, lock in and, mm-hmm. hey, can't nobody hold me, bro. Let me cook. Let me cook. Yeah. Um, You want final score? I do want final score. <laughs> it's a road game, so I'm not predicting a blowout. But. Damn. 101 to 90. 101 to 90, yeah. 101 to 90, Rockets win. Wow. Um, the defense get back on, gets def- back on track. Defense, wow, 90. Defense gets back on track. Well, they slowly start to get back on track. <laughs> they they, give sl- up they a- slowly start to get back on track. I want to say 95, but I'm, I'm going to keep it positive. 90. Like 101 to 90. Defense slowly gets back on track. Shingun does his thing. Jalen realizes, hey, can't nobody on the Hornets guard me. Let me do my thing. He drops a semi-efficient. Game semi semi efficient semi efficient. You love, you love to hear it, but yeah, Rockets win. Your your son is back. Hey, that helps out a lot. I can't wait for Tari to come back. I uh, that's the dude. Yeah. No fact. That's what we're all praying for. Yeah. We're all praying yeah. for yeah. it. But yeah, I I think we we can win this game and then go into Brooklyn and t- take care of business. But there you that's go. It. That's what I like to hear. That's it. That's why I like to hear. I like some positivity here. GM over to you. Three keys and final score. Oh man, defend like your hair's on fire. Facts. That's how I feel. Uh, this team's got to bring the energy. That's number two. Like. You gotta defend first of all, but second of all, you gotta bring the energy. The energy is huge in terms of uh, carrying yourself on the road. Just showing that you're not intimidated. Granted, your record is terrible on the <laughs> road, but don't play like your record is terrible. Play, don't play, play a little bit with some reckless abandon, but controlled. Uh, that's right. just something that we need. And uh, number three, when Jabari comes back, go to Jabari early and often in the mid post. Okay, uh, even though I've he been might, he might that, have, man. I've been he might have some rust, but you can see that a lot of these guys are having trouble scoring, and Jabari's just an easy outlet, almost He's nearly such an automatic auto in, the the mid, in the mid in the mid in the mid post. Right. So I feel like if you can utilize that uh, to your advantage, it opens up a lot of things, and you know, it'll help LP, it'll help uh, Jalen, Fred, Cam Whitmore even open up a little bit in terms of. Getting open open shots and opportunities at the three point line, but that's it, man. And you know what? My final score. Let's go. One fourteen, one oh eight. Rockets. Oh, yes. okay. Boom. We're getting back on the wind wind column. I just looked it up. They're shooting thirty six 
thirty six percent, almost or past thirty six percent. That's not bad. Three. Yeah, that's not bad. Charlotte or Houston? Charlotte. So defend the three. Yeah, we're like, yeah, you don't want to look at. What yeah, we're that's not. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not. You know what? You know what? Probably hit forty percent. You know what? I'm choosing. I'm choosing peace here. I'm not gonna look. My my keys quick and easy. Defense number one. Defense number two. Feed the young men number three, as in feed Jabari, Jalen, Shangun. Rely on those guys. Take you to the promised land. Get a win. Get back on the W column. We, Facts. we do not fucking need, need it. it. Yeah, we're not trying to go 20 and 24. No. no. I can't no. have that. Can't I love Kobe, but I want my 24th win, not my 24th loss. Let's go ahead and get my final score. 108. I went away from 118. 108, 104. Mm. Rockets get the win. Right. I am changing. I'm veering away from 118 just because I just feel like it's not, yeah. I don't know. That yeah. luck thing isn't viable anymore. You fucking hate to see it. <laughs> Boys, let's get ready to go home here. All the doom and gloom, you know what? All things considered, uh, as, as much as we don't, you know, it's, 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 it can be almost eye gouging to watch the Rockets at times. At times. At times. Overall, yeah. it's been a very good season. Yeah, it's been a fun season. From where we've been last years. Yeah. I love that we can sit here and be like, hey, Stone needs to make a change. As opposed to the past few years where it's like, fuck, well, this is the direction. We're going to the end of the year. Let's yep. go ahead and trade Daniel Tice and see what we can get, I guess. Yep. Like, that's lit. Like, this is, this is great. Like, we're actually complaining about legit things. So I can't wait uh, to see what's going to happen. Boys, we are two weeks away from the deadline. Oh, man. We're, we're, we'll talk about that. We're not talking about this episode, but everyone just keep your eyes on uh, on all the content and everything Houston Rockets related because Stone, he has his eyes on the keyboard right now on his phone. He's going to make, I can almost guarantee you he's going to make a trade. Yep. So it, something's got to change. Something's got to go down. Let's get ready to go home here, boys. But before we do, once again, I have to give a shout out always to the one and only Celebrity Mint. I'll say that again because I said that away from the microphone, but this time I'm going to hold the hat. <laughs> Celebrity Mint is a family-owned and Houston-based company that we are proud to call. I'm like, I'm like legit falling. <laughs> proud to call a part of the Apollo family. They had already debuted their brand new memorabilia, Mike Tyson Legend Series, along with the Ric Flair card, silver and gold. Collection can be currently found right now at CelebrityMint.com. Give them a follow on all their socials at the Celebrity Mint. Boys, let's get ready to go home here. Do all the, like we said, doom and gloom. Let's hope next Thursday when we reconvene, we can talk about something positive for once. Come on, Rockets. Maybe there'll Facts. be a change. Give us something. It's two weeks in a row, man. Lock in, man. Yeah, lock we in, man. I'm getting tired of this, dude. Need I'm getting it, tired. As much as I love y'all, I'm yeah. just, I'm sick of, I'm sick, I'm sick of, of talking about negativity sick here. Of, uh, 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 that's I'm, right. I'm, See, that's, I'm that's what I'm tired of that, man. Come on. Yeah, I want to talk, man. I want to hear DJ talk his shit. The boys like, I enjoy that. When DJ talks his shit, we all like it all it gives us all life. Yeah. So we need we need that. <laughs> Let's get ready to go home here. GM, give the people what they want to hear right now. Uh make sure to follow me over on Twitter, guys, at JP underscore Mirabueno. Uh make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and TikTok at Summit S O M P O D. Follow us on Instagram at Summit State of Mind underscore P O D. Follow our people, follow our brothers, follow the fam at Apollo NBA and at Apollo H O U. Uh, make sure to super kick that subscribe button on YouTube so you can get notifications and know when we release a podcast, which will happen Bingo. tonight, tomorrow morning. I don't know when, but it'll be at that point tonight. in time. It's happening At tonight. some point in time. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you can see other episodes like um, Zero Gravity, hosted by Stoney and our beat writer, Josh, uh, where they talk about NBA. And also Play Action Takes our NFL podcast where they previewed the conference championship week, which is happening this weekend uh, with Stoney and Garrett. So make sure to tune into that one. I hate it here respectfully. <laughs> Texans aren't in anymore. So DJ, anything more to say? What can they follow you one uh, time? You can follow me on Twitter at Hustle Town Season. The Z. Oh, oh my God, I messed that up. Man, see what's all got me doing, Rockets. <laughs> Hustle Town Season. Season is S Z N. Um, basically, that's it. Um, Y'all not going to find anything else of me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've said everything I needed to say. Book closed. All right, y'all. You can follow me on Twitter as well, at Summit Commission. Shout-outs to our Apollo podcast brethren that continue to kill the game one time. Shout-outs to BTD, Beyond the Diamond. Be sure to give them your first listen for all Astros content. <clears throat> 
pour one out for off the gridiron one time apollo <sighs> texans your first listen for all, all he's all out. I'm all out all houston texans content but hey we got the draft coming up as well as the super bowl coming up so i'm sure they're gonna have a lot more to say on that and we appreciate each and every one of y'all for making us your first listen for all houston rockets content boys let's get ready to go home here on a uh, doom and gloom episode but nonetheless another episode that we pumped out for y'all let's get ready to go home here uh as i end every episode with a classic saying of go apollo go summit and for the love of god rockets please (laughs) win just win please i'm begging you just win go rockets for the love of god dj do the thing no yeet. <laughs> no plan. No. Yeet. 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 No yeet. <laughs> Watch wrestling, y'all. <laughs>